Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, Talk Tuesday. We're here at the straight road. I almost forgot to take a video today. Uh, we're almost halfway through a walk. <laughs> and we were just like doing recalls and name games and I just wasn't paying attention. And somehow managed to forget that it was Tuesday. But we're back. Wormy Worms, you're welcome. Okay. Worry. Quit eating the foliage. Good girl. Okay. What are you looking at, Goodness. Okay. Uh, how many do we have? Eleven, for those who like a head count. All of them blonde, except for Maggie. Um, so it's really funny when they go, like, in the side. You can barely see them all, because they're all the color of the grass. Hamish, out of it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But it's not going in your mouth. Um, Miss Nova in front. Hamish, you too. Come on. Come on. Uh, okay, who do we have? We've got Newton, Tucker and Maggie up there. We've got Archie, Rowan, Willow, Rory and Stella. We've got Bailey, Hamish. Oh, you found a stick, good girl, Nova. I know her. Um, <laughs> and I actually did remember to bring some questions today. It's just hysterical. It's like I go through cycles of remembering what day it is and then forget it. Out, 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 out. Oh, more wormy worms. Good. Ro! Thank you. Good girl, Nova. Just hoping and praying the raptor doesn't notice that Nova has a stick. Tucker. Yeah, now I don't trust what you were rolling in. Okay. Um, a couple from the bonus content video. Uh, I don't know, last week or the week before, on the Friday. We talked about, like, how I walk my guys off leash when we do, like, hikes and stuff like that. Um... And I get a lot of this question, even though I say it quite frequently, and that question is, do I take my dogs to dog parks? And the short answer is no, I do not. Um, at least in our area, dog parks are sort of like a cesspool of um, disease, right? Like it's a huge concentration of dogs in a very small area. Nova and Tucker. I don't know what it is, but you guys are too interested. Uh, Willow, it's literally a piece of grass that you just scared yourself with. Hysterical, but... Bailey! Um, and also, you get people there that maybe shouldn't have dogs. Um, and so their dogs are very poorly mannered. Like... Our first dog, well, not my first dog, but like my first adult outside of the home dog. Um, we used to take him to a place in Ottawa called Bruce Pit all the time. Um, and then within a period of a couple months, he got attacked uh, three times at the dog park and once while we were walking down the street. And I was just like, you know what, I'm done. Um, none of it was his fault. Like, on the street, he was in a heel, on leash with me. Two German Shepherds broke out of their backyard, ran across the sidewalk, across a street, to attack him. And the owner did nothing. <laughs> like, literally nothing. And then in the dog park, um, it was just people that are like, oh, they'll sort themselves out. And it's like, no, I will sort it out. <sighs> it's just chaos. Anyways, so... I don't have really good experience with dog parks. I get a ton of clients uh, that their stories always start out with like, oh, he was such a great dog. And then we don't know what happened. Like we were at the dog park and he got attacked by another dog and now he's not a good dog park dog anymore. It's like, okay, cool. Well, and <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And then of course, um, my favorite is I took my puppy to the dog park, which is just a terrible idea. Like, the thing about puppies, and I tell this to all, like, my puppy clients, uh, puppy training clients, is they will pick up behaviors from other dogs way faster than we can teach it to them, 
right? So if we have like a certain vision for what we want our dog to behave like, um, and let's say they're in toddler stage, okay? So you've got a toddler and we're gonna equate a dog park to a bar at happy hour, right? If you go during peak times, right? When there's lots and lots of other dogs, you've got a bunch of adult dogs there um, that maybe don't have great behaviors, but your puppy is gonna learn that behavior from those dogs a heck of a lot quicker um, than you trying to teach them good behaviors. And it's also so much more challenging to change an established behavior as opposed to just making sure they never have that behavior in the first place when it comes to puppies anyways. Um, so yeah, like Rowan, for example, he's never seen a dog park. Kronk has never seen a dog park. We never took Murphy to dog parks. Um, and sometimes, oh, well, maybe Murphy has had gone to dog parks very early on though. Cause we would try to go like off peak hours or when there weren't a lot of people, but inevitably Stella and Bailey. Hamish. Thank you. Sorry, coyote poop. I'll grab that on the way back. Tucker. <laughs> He's like, I know you just said no to the dogs in front of me or in front of you, but I'm behind you. So it's okay, right? Funny kid. Anyway, so it's basically like taking your toddler to a bar at happy hour and expecting them to come home and not start cussing, right? Like they're going to learn that there and it's going to be hilarious to the other patrons. They're going to laugh. Baby's going to be like, oh, this is great and continue doing that. So similarly with dogs, they're going to do something. It's going to shoot off happy chemicals and then you're kind of stuck trying to fix it. Um, another question was why when I see people do I good do I call my dogs back to me and leash them like why don't we say hi um, well firstly when it comes to just straight up people with no dogs this might shock some of you there are people out there that are scared of dogs and it is a public trail it's a multi-use trail and I don't want to be that guy right I also don't want to teach my dogs Bailey Thank you. I also don't want to teach my dogs that it's okay to like rush up and get super excited whenever they see a new person, right? Uh, Rowan, that was rude. Setting up an ambush. Um, so those are the two main reasons. Like um, it's a courtesy. It's common courtesy and everyone should be doing it. Now, even if that person has a dog and their dog is off leash, Hey, Mesh. Thank you. I'm still recalling my dogs and I'm still probably putting their leashes on. Um, and I use that mostly as a signal to the other person that they should do the same because I'm just not interested in meeting their dog or having our dogs meet. Um, because without having some time to observe that dog engage its behavior, without knowing that it's properly vetted, um, not knowing whether or not it has a behavior that I don't want my dogs to learn. Like, there's a lot of questions. It's a risk assessment. And realistically speaking, if I have my dogs on leash, they have their dogs on leash, we do a pass by and then they're both off leash on the trail again and ignoring each other, then I'm not worried at all. There's no problems, right? Hold on two seconds. About face! the scariest sound in the world is like several hundred pounds of dog coming at you from behind. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's why I do that is generally speaking, when my dogs meet other dogs, because of the experiences I've had, Willow, that's a no from me. You know better. Um, Like I've been in those situations. I've trained and dealt with like over a thousand dogs at this point, well over. Um, so I have a lot more experience with um, just bad situations overall. I work with a lot of reactive dogs uh, and it's just not worth the risk in my opinion. It's not worth the vet bills. It's not worth 
the behavior development that I then have to spend months, if not years, fixing. Right? Uh, can we not pee on my dog? Yeah, you know it too. Hey, Mish. Rowan, what is in your mouth? Come here. Look like you have a beard. Give me that. Okay, get out of here. Rotten child. Um, yeah, so that's what it comes down to. So I have basically a, a yes-no in my brain that can, like, first I evaluate my own dog's behavior. If I'm happy with that behavior, then sure, maybe I'll consider meeting another dog. Um, but particularly when dogs are on leash, I will never. It's not ever going to be a thing. Rowan has not had a single bad experience while he's on leash. He has zero reactivity. I am to keep it that way. Kronk has had bad experiences on leash, mostly because of idiot people. Um, and then I spend the next couple weeks fixing that every time there's an incident, right? Because he loses confidence, he loses trust. We have to redo all that. Um, and now there are like specific dogs, or dog breeds, I should say, uh, not even breeds, looking. Ma'am. There are certain looking dogs and certain energy dogs that he's just not interested. And because he's not interested, he's going to defend his space. Right? So, yeah, on leash is just a non-starter. And then if I do want, like, let's say I, my friends have dogs, they want to bring them over, we want them to get along. I have a whole process that I go through to introduce them. And the only reason I would introduce them is like, am I going to be seeing this dog more than once every six months? Sure. Okay. Let's put the work in to make sure that they have the most successful meeting that they can have. Um, and then even if they don't like each other, let's take the time to train them to tolerate. Right? So like in Packwalk here, there are dogs that don't like each other. Like <laughs> you can see Tucker's bum way out in the front there. Tucker doesn't really like other dogs. Okay? Like trying to think of one that he actually likes and I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. The only thing he will do, he's checking in with me because we were doing treat stuff earlier. Um, the only thing that he will do is he will initiate zoomies, but as soon as the dogs start like touching him, he'll stop because he doesn't want that. He just wants to be chased. But normally on walk, he's more of an independent explorer. He doesn't really bond with any of the other dogs and that's totally okay. Right? Like, that's just the kind of dog he is, and that's fine. I'm not going to force him to do other. But we learned in the beginning, I don't care if you don't like another dog, that's fine. But it is not appropriate to snap at them. I'm not okay if you charge them or be aggressive about it. Right? So I had to teach him to understand that I understood his needs and I'm the one advocating for him. He doesn't have to do it himself. And when you have a group of dogs this larger, larger, like you've seen me want more than this, each individual dog has to know that, right? So that's why they all get along well enough. Another example would be Archie. Archie hates Bailey with like, it was an instant first sight don't like it, don't want it near me. And again, Bailey has boundary issues. Um, she very much, she wants to be literally in everybody's mouth. So it was a comp, Bailey! Speaking of in your mouth. Yeah, I see you're stuck, hold on. You're okay. Oh, you're well stuck, hold on. Oh God, Rowan. Rowan, whatever it is, no. Now you're gonna drag that line totally the wrong way. But we fixed it, yeah we did, okay. All right, so, Bailey loves to get inside of everybody's mouth. So I had to teach her that no, that's not okay. And then I also had to teach Archie, like, I get that you don't like her. You can, if you watch, 
if I see them do it, I'll point it out. He can tell her no with his body language. Obviously, I'm not gonna like, even grumbling at her, that's fine. Like that's his voice, but he may not lunge at her. He may not try to intimidate her. He may not snap at her. Okay, and again, that's because we're functioning together as a pack. Um, in certain situations, I'm fine with a snap and snarl because that's how they communicate, right? But it's when they push it too far that we have problems. Bailey, you're just full of beans today, ma'am. Um, and this right here, that's a great example. So Newton does not want to play with Rowan. Rowan is annoying. Uh, Miss Rory, I don't trust what you're into, thank you. Um, Newton tells him no. See, just ignoring him. Rowan, oh God, Rory, you almost died. And then if Rowan's not listening, because uh, he won't, because he's a terrier, then I step in and I'm like, that's enough. And then two seconds later, they will be playing, like they will be sprinting around playing. Right? Because they had that interaction, everything got settled, and now they're totally fine with each other again. But like, the minutia of these interactions is over like weeks and months of training these dogs and having them get to know each other and doing the introductions the way that I do them. Um, whereas if all these dogs met just off leash running around like crazy when they're amps, it's way less likely to be successful and you're way more likely to have dog fights, right? Because they're not in a thinking brain. I hope that makes sense. Um, I got totally sidetracked. I don't know if that was a question or not. <laughs> I went off on a rant. Sorry, guys. I think that's all I have time for today. I'm back up at almost 20 minutes. I'm so sorry. That being said, if you guys have a preference for the length of these, um, I was trying to stick to around 10 minutes because I kind of thought that was like a good length of video. Um, but a lot of you guys seem to like the 20 minute videos longer or better, longer, goodness. So if you have a second to leave me a comment and tell me which one you would prefer, um, I will take that under advisement. For, for these videos anyway, like the bonus content videos are all over the map, depending on what I'm talking about. But for like our weekly videos, let me know what length you'd prefer in the comments. I'd appreciate that. And if you have a second to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. Um, I've completely forgotten what my outro is. Oh, right. If you have any questions about this or any other video, you know what to do. Otherwise, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I will talk to you soon. Cheers.